Hi folks, in this video, we're gonna address how to book a Paycheck Protection Program loan inside QuickBooks, and also how to book an EIDL, an Economic Injury Disaster Loan Advance into QuickBooks as well. And then after logging that, we're gonna talk about how forgiveness needs to be recorded in the books. So let's go into QuickBooks Online here, and let's go ahead and record the proceeds of the loan. So I'm gonna go here into Banking, and here, right here, we have the deposit that came in on April 6th for the PPP loan, and it was $52,000 that was received. So I just simply go in there and create a vendor and a category. So vendor would be the bank that I owe that money to. So let's say BOA PPP loan, we're gonna call it. That's gonna be the vendor's name. So we'll create that as a vendor. Then the category, I'm gonna create a loan or a liability account, which we'll also call BOA PPP loan. So let's do BOA PPP loan. And then we'll click on add and we'll create that as a, not an income, as a long-term liability. Remember, this is a loan, money that you have to pay back until it gets forgiven, it's still going to be a loan. So it needs to start as a loan and it's a long-term liability because you're gonna take more than a year to pay it back. So then I'm gonna click on save and close and nothing under class, nothing under category. Nothing on the memo, although you can add some things in the memo, such as maybe when that two year expires or any other notes that might be relevant. For now, let's just book it uh, as a loan into the long-term liability account called PPP loan, and then we're gonna click on add. So let's go into the balance sheet. So I'm gonna go into reports and then go into balance sheet. And then we should scroll down and we should see on their long-term liabilities. Let's check the date, let's see. Okay, this was last year. So let's do here all dates for a second and then click on run report and then go down to see where, there it is. Long-term liability, PPP loan, 52,000. Okay, so that was the first step. We went ahead and recorded the $52,000 loan that came in there. Let's say that we also received, let's say a $5,000 EIDL uh, which is called an economic injury disaster loan from the SBA. Uh, let's say we received it on April 1st. So let's go here under new and then we'll click on bank deposits. Okay, and then we'll scroll down here to the add funds to this deposit received from, we'll just call this one SBA EIDL. It really doesn't matter what uh, vendors you create for this. You can actually even leave a blank if you want to, but it's better to have that in there. And then on their account, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna call this EIDL Advance. Okay, that's what it's called. It's not called a loan, it's called an advance. So I'm gonna go ahead and select here a long-term liability as well. Click on save and close. And then on their amount, we'll put here 5,000. And then we'll go ahead and click on save and close. Okay, so we're all set. If I go back into my balance sheet, let's put here all dates again. Let's go back here to all dates. Click on run report. And then I should have two loans there. I got my BOA PPP loan for 52,000 and the $5,000 advance. For the time being, I still have to pay both of those things back. Now, let's make the assumption that we went ahead and spent the $52,000 in payroll uh, and rent and utilities the way we're supposed to, and they go ahead and forgive the entire amount. So generally speaking, all we would have to do is when the forgiveness comes along is to do a journal entry from the loan into an other income account. So let's 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 do that. Let me count um, eight weeks from the funding date. So let me look at this real quick. So the funding was April 6th, right? So we have April 12th would be one week. April 19th, second week, the 26th will be the third week. Let's go four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so May tw uh, 31st would be the ending of the eight week period. Okay, so that was the original loan was booked on the 6th. And let's say that on the 31st, we actually apply for forgiveness. May 31st, we apply for forgiveness and we get that forgiven. So simply what we do is we do a journal entry. So let's go to new and let's go into journal entry and let's book the forgiveness. So this would be on 
May 35th, 31st. And we're going to go from PPP loan. And we're going to debit because we're going to reduce the loan amount from 52000 And then we're going to create an other income account called PPP loan forgiveness. We'll do PPP loan forgiveness. So we'll create that as a new account. And the category for this is going to be other income. Remember, it's a two-step process, right? We're, we're first recording the loan, and then eight weeks, two months, three months, however long it takes us to go through forgiveness, uh, we'll book the actual adjustment. So let's go to um, right here, tax-exempt interest or other miscellaneous income. Either one, we can use it because this is a tax-free income. We're going to choose tax-exempt interest and then click on save and close. Perfect. So we'll go ahead and book that. Click on save. And we're going to go back into our balance sheet. So let's go back and pull up our balance sheet. And I'm going to pull it on the 30th. So let me pull the balance sheet on 05-30-2020. Click on run report. Uh, let's go back to the beginning of the year here. Run report. And then we should see that we have we owe the money. So we owe the $52,000 on the 30th. I'm going to go up one day to the 31st. When we did the adjustment, click on run report, and then that $50,000 is gone, and the only thing there left is the EIDL advance. So we're going to address the EIDL advance in a second. Let's just look at the profit and loss report real quick. Let's go into profit and loss, and let's pull up uh, all dates, and click on run report, and we should see all the way in the bottom a PPP loan forgiveness of $52,000. Remember that according to the law, this is non-taxable income. So we book it as income anyway, because it actually is from an accounting perspective. It is truly income. But then when it comes to the tax return, we're going to ignore uh, that as, as income uh, because that's what the law says. It's non-taxable income. Now, let's talk about the circumstances of getting a partial uh, forgiveness or uh, the situation where you received an EIDL, an economic injury SBA disaster loan advance at first. So one of the situations is that if you receive the EIDL loan on top of the PPP, you actually have to reduce the amount of the EIDL, uh, sorry, the amount of the PPP by the EIDL amount. So you're going to have to owe the bank, essentially you have to owe the bank that balance. So let's go back to that journal entry. And when it comes time, time to do forgiveness, you're going to disclose that you received those $5,000 and then the bank is not going to pardon those $5,000. In other words, now you have a year and a half or up to two years from funding date to pay back those $5,000. So we're going to reduce the forgiveness amount by that $5,000. So let's reduce that. And then click on save and close. So we'll go back into our balance sheet. going to change all dates, run report, and then we're going to go back and now we owe the bank the $5,000 left. Again, you have two years from the day it was funded to pay that back those $5,000 and you start paying that funding back six months after you get funded. Now, the EIDL advance, however, that needs to be converted back to uh, other income and that might be non-taxable income or it might be taxable income we actually don't know yet we're waiting to see from treasury if there's going to be uh, specific guidance on whether or not you have to reduce part of the forgiveness if that portion that gets reduced because you received an eidl loan in advance whether that's going to be tax-free income or not either way we're going to do a journal entry and remove those five thousand dollars from eidl advance and move them into the other income category so let me pull up that journal entry again and make an adjustment to that so now this would be the EIDL advance. We're going to reduce that by 5,000 and then we'll create another category called EIDL advanced, advanced forgiveness. Okay. So basically, I don't know if I spelled that correctly. doesn't matter. <laughs> so let's go to income, uh, actually other income. And then I'll pick other miscellaneous income and then click on save and close. And then we'll click on save and close. Okay, so at the end of the day, when I pull up my balance sheet, uh, let's look all, all dates again here. It keeps defaulting back to last year. And then I still owe the 
where are we here? I still owe the $5,000 and the EIDL advance turned into a grant, turned into uh, other income because we used it to adjust our original PPP loan proceeds. Let me go back into the profit and loss report so we can see what that looks like. And let's do an all dates here and click on run report. And there it is. We have an EIDL advance forgiveness of 5,000. You can call it grant if you want to or and the PPP loan forgiveness. So it's the same $52,000, but we split it off to make it a little bit easier uh, to identify. Now let's talk about recording the payments to that uh, remaining $5,000 that we owe to that bank. But before we do that, let me just remind you of one thing. The actual loss and process around forgiveness is not 100% clear as of the date of this video. So I'm showing you the procedure in QuickBooks as much as I understand the law for today. So if there's no changes, that's going to be the way it needs to be done. There's a lot of things up in the air around how forgiveness works, whether part-time employees get counted as full-time and what formula get used to figure out uh, what those are. Uh, what if you don't use all the 75% worth of payroll because you couldn't hire employees back? What if uh, you're using other expenses as utilities and what counts as utilities? for the rent and utilities portion of the PPP loan. There's a lot of questions up in the air and that's not 100% clear. I'm actually gonna run a webinar on May 28th. So if you're watching this before May 28th, you can sign up for that webinar and you can watch it live. If you're watching this after, you can watch the recording. I'm gonna do a webinar with my friend Jacob, who's another CPA who's kind of an expert at this stuff. We're gonna address all these little issues uh, and questions are up in the air about how forgiveness works. Not the QuickBooks portion, but the actual law and the tax uh, related issues with the forgiveness portion. So if you're interested on that, it is a paid webinar. The link is in the description. Check it out, you're welcome to join that. So let's do, go ahead and log in that loan uh, payment that we're gonna make after the fact, assuming that we're left with those $5,000 left to pay. So I'm actually gonna go to Google first and I'm gonna search for an amortization table, an amortization calculator. So when I click on this one that says calculator.net, let's check that one out. Hopefully that will work. Let's see if this works. So loan amount. So we have $5,000 and the terms is gonna be 1.5 years and the interest will be 1%. Those are the terms of the PPP loan. The first six months, you don't make payments, you make the payments after uh, the six months are over and then you have a year and a half to pay it back at 1% rate. Now, one thing that's not clear to me yet is whether or not the interest for the first six months uh, gets accrued and it gets tacked on to the end of the loan. I actually don't have a lot of clarity on, around that. I will uh, clarify that in the May 28th webinar that I'm referring to. Obviously, your bank will let you know if that's the case. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Calculate, and this will tell me what the monthly payment is like. So if I make those monthly payments from uh, month 7 all the way to month uh, 24, I will pay back the loan fully. Now, you can pay the, the loan 100% in one shot after the six months are over, if you got the $5,000 or if you want to extend the terms for the entire two years, then you can amortize it this way. So let's go ahead and book uh, $279 into QuickBooks to make that first payment. So let's go into new here and then we're going to click on check. Okay, let's say I'm writing the bank a check or maybe it's an automatic draw. We still don't know exactly what that process would look like. So let's look for our vendor, which is bank PPP loan. And we'll pick the bank account that we're going to pay them from. And then let's say six months after funding. So we got funding on April 6th. So naturally we'll go back and do one, two, three, four, five. And then October 6th will probably be the first payment that we'll make. So in here, we're going to break down uh, principal and interest. So in here, we'll pick the BOA PPP loan that's here on our liabilities as our account for principal. And then we're going to have interest expense. Let's create the account because it wasn't in my books. So let me create an interest expense account, which is going to be a regular expense category under the detail type. There should be uh, interest paid as an option. It really doesn't matter what you pick on detail type, but you want to be consistent. And then we click save and close. And then we'll go ahead and break out how much is principal and how much is interest. If I go back to my amortization calculator and go down, this will actually give you what each of the payments is in terms of interest and principal, right? So right here, the first payment is $4.17 of interest and 
uh, $275 of principal. So every one of these payments, 18 payments, will have a different interest and principal. So let's do $4.17 on the interest portion. And then let's do $275.81 for the principal, $275.81. Okay, so that will add up to the $279.98, which is uh, the monthly payments we chose to make so we can pay off this loan uh, 18 months after that six months, uh, no payment period from the PPP. So we'll go ahead and click on uh, save and close. And now we can go into the balance sheet. Let's go reports and let's go balance sheet. And let's do all dates here real quick and then click on run report. And then we'll go down to our BOA PPP loan. We can click on the total balance there and then we can see the detail how we can see the funding date, the amount that we got forgiven, and then the first payment. So as you see all 18 of those payments, you will eventually see the loan balance go down to zero and you're gonna see your interest uh, be put in your book accordingly. So anyway, I hope that was useful. Again, if you wanna learn how the PPP process works for forgiveness in detail from me and another CPA friend of mine, so you can learn exactly how we're gonna approach going to the bank, and try to maximize the forgiveness so we don't have money being left out that we have to pay back, uh, join my webinar. The link is going to be on the description. Anyway, I'll see you on the next one.